probably been there hundreds of years and you, you kind of the mind boggles to think like, how did they you know how did they do that all those years ago so yeah very very impressive that's probably uh, the most impressive thing I've seen in a while it's always nice to go inside and see the real history and feel the history and have a pray maybe pray for birdies <laughs> It would be brilliant accolade to finish number one on the Challenger rankings for you. You join a list of names that have done massive things in the world of golf since then. It um, be an honour, so hopefully that can, that can happen. Number one's always important. It's, it's better than number two, isn't it? Um, yeah, I know us three guys are here doing this, this today, but it's not just us three that are in it. But yeah, I guess we're in the you know we're in the box seats. If, if we do play well, then we make it difficult for everybody else. So uh, yeah, and we're all going to be trying to beat each other. So you know, uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully I can come out on top. Okay. I don't have any pressure to play this week, and I'm not like I'm pretty safe. And I will try also to do my best and try to, to catch Callum. But we're already there, and we 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 will do something good. So after sampling some Mallorca culture at the Catedra Basilica de Santa Maria, the battle to become Road to Mallorca number one would now enter its final stretch. Welcome back to the opening day of the Challenge Tour Grand Final. And John, I suppose they're right in a way, don't they? They don't have some of the pressure, these three guys, that some of the other players in the field certainly will be feeling this week. No, absolutely not. But of course, if you're up at the top, you want to try and finish Challenge Tour number one. You know, it might make the difference of one, maybe two tournaments. And then down at the other end, of course, you're vying to try and squeeze into that top 15. Would have been just the start out of a far would have been looking for with two unanswered birdies in the first seven holes. But that all changed here at the par five seventh. That missed putt would mean a triple bogey eight, taking the Welshman from two under to one over par. He is certainly one with the pressure on his shoulders. Very much so, yeah. But you have to try and put that to the back of your mind in this situation. It's the end of the season. You've played well to get here. So let's get out to the fourth with Jack Senior in the third last group, playing with Cormac Chavin and Ricardo Santos. Bogey at the first for Jack Senior, then par par. And then here at the fourth, a great tee shot into this long par three. He would convert that and take him back to level par. Well, to the next of the par threes, the sixth, Adrian Moronk, about to become the first Polish player to make it onto the European Tour, looking good at sixth on the rankings. Five straight pars, but how about this tee shot? An absolute cracker. Unfortunately for Moronk, after making birdie there, he'd make a double bogey seven at the very next hole. So let's go back to the first and the challenge tour number one. At the moment, Callum Hill, great tee shot here. Trying to ease it into this flag that's just on top of a little ridge. A four would be a, a nerve set, but what a shot that is. So Callum Hill converts that and straight away moves two under for the day with an eagle at the first. Yeah, just two eagles at the first on day one. Richard Bland, though, after making a par five at the first, had to hold that decent sized putt for a bogey five at the second hole. Conditions not easy, that reflected in the scoring. Dale Whitnell out in a bogey free, 33 shots. Good enough to give the Englishman a two-shot lead. The 15th man in the standings, Oliver Farr, he's won over. So let's get out to the six. Francesco Laporta, one over at the moment. 5-5 five, five start would not please him. Par three with a green slightly perched up, bunker down the right-hand side. I like the way this guy plays the game. Oh, yeah, that's a lovely tee shot there. Chance to get that early bogey back and get back to level. Well, what a season for Callum Hill. Of course, uh, like Rosner, a chance to win a third event of the season, which would be a, a slightly different category than being uh, number one. Also, excellent tee shot. That eagle at the first, followed by a, a bogey. Now, down the left-hand side, a nine. T placed back in the trees. The breeze 
just seems to have died a little bit. It was a little bit stronger this morning, coming from a southerly direction. Well, the other two in very good position to maybe make twos. Richard Bland missed the green left. You can hear the greens are pretty firm, and John, the forecast tomorrow is for some very windy conditions. It could get really tricky for the players. Yeah, and they're mindful, as with Neil Briggs yesterday, who was uh, altering the hole locations for Friday because of the strength. This is the uh, far as third shot up and down here to get out in 37. That's a classy touch, isn't it? Excellent shot. Got his uh, dad on the bag there. You saw Graham, who uh, played on the European Tour. <laughs> well, he'd been bogey-free, three birdies, top of the leaderboard, but a little shake of the head there from Dale Whitnell. It's going to be a bogey at best. Callum Hill from the right here at six. be a huge achievement if he could go on to claim the number one spot come Sunday night yeah, and of course he played really well didn't he at the Scottish Open too John yeah it's all confidence building stuff back to Dale Whitnell now for a bogey and oh that's unlucky a double bogey there is expensive yeah, you can hear the breeze though the wind I should say long haul 8,500 yards, dog leg, easy to make mistakes, easy to put some big numbers on the board. So three under to one under he goes. Quick putt here for Garcia Rodriguez. You see the different colours of grass there. Light is fast, dark is a little bit slower, and it's so hard on this golf course with the breeze to lay the ball dead. So it's going to test your nerves from four feet a lot. He had a couple of wins on the uh, Alps tour, did Garcia Rodriguez, the Spaniard looking good for part, and uh, that's an excellent up and down from far. So that's him out in 37, despite that disaster at eight. Could see you, see you in that shirt, John. Well, I think you're the only one who could, to be fair. This is a quick putt. And a brilliant putt straight in the centre for Francesco Laporta. That takes him back to level par after his 5-5 start. Bogey at the second. Another one goes here at six. Richard Blander a little bit off the pace. I suppose it depends uh, what the leading score is going to be at the end of the day. Right now, though, we've got a new leader. Rhys Enoch, with his third birdie of the day at the 11th, has got it to two under. The Welshman, one of those who could jump into the top 15 with a big week. Just four players in the red figures. A tough scoring day in Mallorca by the Mediterranean. The final leg of the Challenge Tour season comes from a new location, Mallorca, and a defining week with the opportunity to follow in the footsteps of some of the game's great players. Ryder Cup stars and major champions have taken this path. After 23 tournaments and with the grand final celebrating its 25th anniversary, one last chance to earn a life-changing promotion to the European Tour. An exciting week ahead and part of our team, five-time European Tour winner, Mikko Illinen.
Yes, welcome everybody to Club de Golf Alcanada, situated on the beautiful island of Mallorca, where the top 45 guys from Road to Mallorca are battling it out for 15 available spots on the European Tour next season. This is the 2019 Challenge Tour Grand Final. Mallorca taking centre stage for the Grand Final this and also the next three years. Club de Golf Alcanada hosting the event in 2019 with the Challenge Tours finale moving to a different venue on the island in each of its next three editions. Well, it's the first uh, professional tournament on Mallorca since 2007, so it's a, it's a great week to get uh, Mallorca as a golf destination on the map for European uh, golfers and tourists. Uh, and I think also for the local community, we have a couple of thousand registered golfers here. It's fun to come and see professional golf on the island without having to travel. A great location for the lucky 45 who have made it to the final week of the campaign. Callum Hill looking to become the first Scot to win the rankings in 14 years. But while it's tight in the race to finish as number one, perhaps the real drama will come in the bid to make the top 15. Every grand final competitor still capable of making it the right side of that line. So after a six-year spell in the Middle East, the Challenge Tour Grand Final returns to European soil on the largest of the Balearic Islands in Mallorca. A lot is on the line. Twice a winner already this season. Miko has been catching up with the current number one. I've looked at your statistics. All your uh, successes have been on the sort of minus 20s and 19s. So, you know, you're not afraid to go low then. Um, I think when it becomes uh, maybe a, a more gettable course or a little shorter where you have a few wedges, I do quite well. Um, so hopefully I can continue that trend and have a good week this week. Yeah. The man to be shot at and clinging on to the all-important 15th spot is Welshman Oliver Farr. You recently had a win in Morocco, mm. so it seems like the, maybe the momentum is, is on your side. Do yeah. you feel it? Yeah, I've, I've played I played pretty well all year. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Morocco was a great week. Um, finished off with a great round. And, yeah, like, I've had a couple of weeks off um, after that. So maybe the momentum is still there. I still feel my game's in a really good place. And, yeah, hopefully we can continue this week. And even those players ranked outside the top 40 on the standings, like Carlos Pijem from Spain, start the week with aspirations to take the leap to the European Tour. What's your mindset on Thursday when you go on, the, on that first tee? Well, uh, I got in here as a number 43, so I got in, it was tough. Uh, I was playing in China and I made the cut and, it, and then I could play here. So I think the only thing it, it's good for me is to win or just finish second. So I'm gonna, just gonna play as much aggressive as I, as I can. Richard Bland knows what it takes to win a grand final and starting the week third on those Road to Mallorca rankings, he's all set for a European Tour return. The yeah. desire was always there, that ne that's never ever left me. And, uh, and I felt that you know, I still had something to, to give in the game and to prove to myself. And uh, yeah, so it was just a, just get your head down, get the job done. And, and that's something that I, I am quite good at. You know, it, it's not been easy being you know, out hit by 30, 40 yards, but you know, a little bit of life in the old dog. Yeah. <laughs> Club de Golf Alcanada, located in Alcudia, in the north of Mallorca, designed by Robert Trent Jones Jr. to pass 71 of just over 7,100 yards. A fabulous setting for what's bound to be a dramatic week. I think that it's going to be really windy and that's going to be very challenging because if the wind uh, is not blowing, I think it's a course that probably the wind is going to be around 20 under or something like that because it's not really long. But if the wind blows, I think it's going to be challenging because the greens are going to be firm and it's going to be great. I'm Richard Kaufman alongside John Hawksworth. Let's get to the action. The first group, John, going out at 8.30 this morning. Yes, out of the 45 field, 8.30 in the morning is a very nice time to start. A little bit of breeze up early on this golf course, but I think it needs it a little bit and a par five to start that is reachable for everybody in the field. Here we have from Carlos Pijem, one of those in that uh, first three ball 
of the day. A cool morning, but gorgeous, sunny conditions. And even a few people were out and about to witness it as well. Amico was amongst them, sampling the first tee and re-emphasizing what's up for grabs here in Mallorca this week. Right, the 2019 Challenge Tour Grand Final is underway. 45 guys are fighting for those 15 available spots in that limelight. So let's get out onto the golf course with Ross McGowan, 42nd on the money list and needing a very good week. Of course, a former winner on the race to Dubai and he would set off with an early birdie. So let's get on to the second. Par four that dog legs from right to left. And it was good news again for the Englishman. And immediately he moves to two under par. Yeah, realistically, one of those who uh, probably needs uh, a win this week, maybe second place at Ross McGowan, 40th on the road to Mallorca rankings. But what a fabulous start he has made to this opening round. Shortish par for the third, but you can see where the pins are located on these greens that were relayed some three months ago. Plenty of undulations and slope, quite a lot of grain on them. But they are receptive, which is nice, so you can attack the flags, but a couple under after three is the perfect start. Yeah, maybe Ross just saying a little bit of breeze coming into his face there. This is the, uh, the first of the par threes, 209 yards. Birdie, bogey, par start for Laurie Cantor. You can pitch it left of the flag here, and it will feed in from left to right. The surfaces are beautiful. And that's a very good shot indeed. Running it round about 12 on the stint meter, which is pretty quick indeed. Maybe a little longer than he would have hoped here, McGowan, for his third birdie in three holes. Not to be, but a very nice start from the day and day Real Czech Challenge champion. She'll be marking down a four in a moment. It's nice to play early because you get the advantage of the better services. It's a one tee start with these 45 players, normally bigger fields. They start at one and ten. This is uh, Laurie Cantor, birdie bogey par. So this for another birdie at four. Go and get there, get there. Brilliant start. So he moves under par, another man needing a great week really to try and get himself into that top 15. And of course they're going out in uh, order of the uh, Rota Mallorca ranking. So the first group's out. The players in the uh, latter stages of those rankings. Huge drive from Will Besting at the first. One of the four Dutchmen starting the week in the top 21 of the rankings. Besting only hitting an eight iron in for his second to that par five. It set him up for a birdie four. That's a huge tee shot. Dale Whitnell out the third after a par pass start. And look at that, turning in from left to right, immediately moves to one under, a man who's 34th on the money list at the moment. Well, it's all about timing your run right, isn't it? And uh, Ben Stowe seems to be doing that. Top 10s in the most two recent events in China, taking him to 17th on the standings. Nice up and down at the first, straight to one under for Stowe. Now here's the man right on the bubble, Oliver Farr, 15th back on the first tee and he'd like to be in this position on Sunday of course 15 getting promotion through to the main tour well one man uh, just behind him is Lars van Meijl 16th on the rankings the Ops de Provence winner another to make a birdie the first the whole Miko has taken a closer look at The first hole here at Alcanara Golf Club is a 501 yard par five. It offers you a great chance for a four. If you get your drive far enough down there on this tight tee shot, it's a good chance for a three. So the ideal line of this tee shot is up here on the left hand side, but you're gonna see a lot of drives ending up in this right rough. The fairway is tilting heavily left to right, but even if you end up in this rough, it gives you a nice chance to hit the green or bail out to the right and chip it onto the green. This is about the perfect layup area here. It's easy to get to all the pins. I can see maybe one 
pin position down on the left and on the lower tier and three on the, on the upper tier. But what you need to avoid on this hole is this back bunker. I don't see a lot of balls getting close to the hole from here. You need to get very lucky with the lie to be able to convert a birdie. It's a good chance for a four, but if you get a, get your tee shot on the fairway, you can you can make a three. Yeah, it's a nice par five to start with. This is Darius Van Driel, 14th on the money list. Of course, playing with Oliver Farr and Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez, the other man. So it's a nervous week for these sort of players in this place on the money list because nothing is certain and suddenly you could have it pinched off you, which is cruel. Well, that didn't look like a nervous start, did it? What a shot from Van Drill. Eagle opportunity coming up, although maybe some early round aches there from him. And as Miko was saying, even from the rough here, it's a, a nice angle actually from that right side to get towards that flag. And that's another excellent shot from far. Breeze forecast to get up a little bit this morning. It might drop at lunchtime and then re-emerge later on. So it's something you've got to cope with. Look at the uh, slope on yeah. this. And even that, he Ball. couldn't get to uh, stop whole side. Nicely played, though. A little bit of trouble off the tee. Well, you mentioned uh, Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez just over the penalty area with his second struggling to get on the right level well, just to say Stowe birdied the first so there he was at the second at one under par yeah you've got to avoid that water hazard left which of course is called a, a penalty area now that this is going to move considerably off the right hand side you'll see different shades of grass on these greens because that is the grain and they've yet to settle down fully and some of it doesn't run in the direction it should it should normally go with which way the water runs but uh, Nothing wrong with the surfaces. Not been an eagle yet at the first, and there's not going to be one after that putt either. <laughs> there's a few players being caught out with the pin just up on this ridge. It looks faster than it actually is. Some concerned faces. Fathers here, uncles, all sorts of people supporting the players. Eagle opportunity. Far looking to graduate from the challenge tour for the third time. Not easy being number 15, though, is it, on the rankings, John? No, of course it's not. It's better than being 16, but no, it's not easy at all. But it's a great learning ground, the challenge tour, to play your trade, to get yourself ready, to get out onto the European tour. It's uh, so competitive everywhere now. Oh, that's an excellent save. Well done. Good start. Stays one under. So let's go back to the first. Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez. This for his birdie. This will move from right to left. That mark is not a bad line for him. Oh. Well, many have made four and a couple have made three here early on. So it's going to kind of feel like a drop shot very early days but it's two under par leading the way in Mallorca left-handed Frenchman Robin Sio Segrist and KPMG trophy winner Dale Whitnell off to good starts the leading trio from the rankings well they're off next at the Club de Golf Al Canada And so to the first event of the season where ranking points start to count at the Turkish Airlines Challenge, taking centre stage, Connor Sai. The Challenge Tour season is off and running. For the win and a closing 66, enough to earn Rosner his first Challenge Tour title. Antoine Rosner sweeping to victory and his second straight win on the Challenge Tour. 
McGowan, the understated Englishman, for his first win in 10 years. This week's finisher was the veteran Santos. At Santa Omer, Robin was most reliable. For a proud Frenchman, a proud moment. Johansson seized his chance to secure a first Challenge Tour victory in just his second event of the season. Jordan to clinch his first professional title. In Slovakia, opportunity not for Reese. Stephen Tiley hitting the heights in France as we head next to the Austrian hills. Not the most dramatic of finishers, but Hill won't care a jot, crossing the finishing line with a par, job done. As a jubilant, Jose Felipe celebrated his first victory in over three years. Collecting his second win in just three weeks, it's the in-form Scott, Callum Hill. A good contest between friends, but victory in the end to senior. Van Driel, the champion. It's a first win for Dale Wynn. It was Heisler who ruled in Britannia. Making history for Poland, it was Adrian Moronk's week in the sunny Algarve. With a bogey-free closing 67, the trophy belonged to Van Mael. The man who benefits most from Morocco is our champion, Oliver Farr. It was on the third time of asking that Quartero Blanco struck, who jumps a huge 60 places to 41st on the road to Mallorca rankings. As we headed east to China, it was finally Francesco's time to shine in Hainan. And in Foshan, the most lucrative event of the year, it's Bobby who breaks new ground. So that the season so far, 23 events down, one to go, the Challenge Tour Grand Final from Mallorca. Now, this is Callum Hill at nine, an up and down front nine, it's been with a double at seven and eight, but he saves par at nine there to go out in 39, had to be plus three, the man who's leading the road to Mallorca rankings. Yeah, good, good save that, wasn't it, from uh, Callum Hill, and a good fight back, really, you have to say, from Oliver Farr after that horrible eight at the seventh, birdied 11th, really good save there at the tough 13th, with a triple on the card, level pass, very good going, especially when you consider his position on those rankings. Ewan Ferguson went out in 36, then he birdied 11 and 12, but he bogeyed 13, that at 14 to save par, and I can tell you he's parred 15, but bogeyed 16, and he's back to level. Two bogeys on the two par fives on the front nine, but it didn't stop Martin Siemensen from putting together a very good score. This final approach at the 18th, setting up a closing birdie for the Dane to get in the clubhouse with a one under 70. Dale Whitnell, he's had an up and down day as well, out in 33, but he doubles 13, bogeys 14, but then birdies 16, and in the end, it all adds up to around a 70, one under the card. Francesco Laporta, level after six. And this moves him to one under, out in 35, and I can tell you he's par 10 and 11 to stay at one under. Now, another Welshman vying for his card, Rhys Enoch. Well, he was a couple under after four, but unfortunately, he bogeyed seven. That took him back to one under, but he birded 11 pars since then, and he's two under par going up the last. Yeah, two under. That's good enough to be in a share of the lead. Enoch alongside Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez and Open de Bertin winner Sebastian Heisler. Two in the clubhouse at one under. Miko is with one of them. It's a solid start. Mm. Keep it going. You yeah. never know. You never know what's, what's going to happen on Sunday. No, it's, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, today was an easy day to get out of it. I mean, yeah. where you could completely be, be done because you could easily shoot six, seven, eight over um, if you get it going going a little bit wrong it's it's tough to stop the bleeding out here okay good luck thank you the rest of the week thank you very much oh well. i love the way that uh, miko has a glove on while he's doing his interviews john well it certainly doesn't drop the uh, 
the microphone, obviously. Now, this is uh, Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez at 14. He went out in 36, and then he birdied 10-11, so he's a couple under. But that's not the best tee shot from him there. Yeah, slightly uphill, 180 yards. He's kept it together well, hasn't he, Far? Sometimes, you know, you make an eight on a hole, it can really upset you. It certainly can. The rougher, the smoother this game. And that's a good tee shot there. Helps having uh, maybe his father on the bag. Played the uh, senior open this year at Lydon and St Anne's. Did Graham Fart. Yeah, good player himself. I remember having my dad on the bag once, and I can tell you it was only once. <laughs> I can imagine. Nicely done from Rhys Enoch. Chance to finish with a birdie. Now out of the bunker for Rodriguez here. Depends how the ball's lying. And to me, it seems to be okay. Got a bit of purchase on it. That's a delicate little shot there. Just drop the club on the back of the ball. Hopefully, we'll escape with a par. Yeah, all the players had their stories. Garcia Rodriguez, uh, a couple of years ago, was out for eight months with a wrist injury. Reese Enoch, well, this to set the target. This for a 68. Oh, pity. Starting the week outside the top 15 on the road to Mallorca rankings. 25th he started. But this is a very good start, even with that miss. He sure is. Anything under par. Gregory Havre, of course, former winner on the race to Dubai. Multiple winner. Part of that three ball. Back to uh, far here. This at the 14th. Oh, and that's his fourth birdie of the day to go with that. Well, eight that he took at the seventh. So that puts him one under for the day again. Yeah. Brilliant fight back. It is absolutely stunning. And uh, <laughs> he's going to be fitting us, I think, all the way through to Sunday. Lovely birdie there. This would be a good par as well. Yeah, those two going very nicely in this group, both in the red figures. It's uh, a day where it isn't that easy to find birdies on the Club de Golf Alcanada. Three-way tie, and that's 69 from Reese Enoch as the Welshman setting the clubhouse pace. What do you need to do this week to get, in, get inside that magical number? I mean, there are think? plenty of things, but I'm focusing on well, winning, really. I mean, yeah. second will probably be enough if it's on my own, but... You know, then you're relying on a lot of other people, so yeah. I've just got to try and win. Um, that, that takes care of it, so that's, that's my aim. Well, Matthew Jordan is one of those like Enoch, who has won this season. The Englishman only turned pro last September, was relying on invites at the start of the season. Well, here he is, and uh, a birdie at 14, taking the Italian Challenge winner back to level par. But the 23-year-old Englishman wasn't done there. Nice tee shot at the short par for 15th, just a wedge in. Setting himself up for another birdie. Jordan moving under par for the day. Yeah, and for Francesco Laporta. This is second shot into the 15th. And it was good news. He'd make a birdie there and move to one under par. Well, it was a Spanish winner of the grand final a year ago, and Sebastian Rodriguez Garcia on the Spanish island of Mallorca looking to follow in the footsteps of Adri Arnaus. Anything under par, you're going to be well placed heading into day two of the Challenge Tour grand final. Are you aware that you've upset one or two players by leapfrogging ahead and knocking them out of the top ten? No, I won this tournament. I, I entered the top ten, so that's golf.
But as Stenson wraps off a fine week, the winner by a comfortable five-shot margin. And this is a great way to finish it off with, with a win here and getting the number one spot. Just got some battling away and uh, playing well. I knew I had a chance this week and yeah, I've done the best. Feels fantastic, you know, and it's my attachment, so it's just uh, the best feeling ever. It means a lot to be the, the best player of the year, pretty much. I've got to be made up with this year. It's, um, I think my aim at the, t at the start of the year was top 20, like everyone else's is, and to win it is just incredible. challenge to a victory. It was something that I was chasing since middle of the year and you know to do it on the last event it was so special. The 25th anniversary of the Challenge Tour Grand Final and for the first time coming from Mallorca. Yeah now Oliver Farr as the clouds just begin to gather a little bit, one over par at the moment, and the breeze there making the greens even more awkward. Yeah, just coming off the back of a, a double bogey at 17. Another annoying mistake from that man. Starting the day, starting the week in 15th place. Now, this would be a good birdie. Jack Senior at 17, long par three. Playing today. 233 yards but that's his third birdie of the day and now takes him under par he did bogey one and bogey 13 but he's the right side of par now yeah seventh at the start of the week you'd think the top seven maybe even the top ten are safe but uh, well you never know Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez just uh, one bogey today but work to do here at the last although that is delightful really good work Oh, this man, Francesco Laporta, has been impressive today. At the 16th, you don't want to go right to the flag here with the second shot. That's probably why he's heard on the side of caution, but chipping back into the grain there. One under at the moment, that's his third shot. Just coming off a birdie at 15. Yeah, he's looking at the green as if to say what happened there. They really relayed these greens, what, about three years ago, John? No, three months ago, actually. Three months, wow. Uh, and that's why they've not quite settled down. This is up over the ridge now. This will be quick from here. Settle down. Far just drifting a little bit too far past the Laporta to just see if he can hold his par putt, stay one under par. He's got, well, the tough 17th to come, and then the 18th dog leg from right to left. Very good putt in the end, so stays at one under par the winner of, well not very long ago under three weeks ago yeah it's been a fabulous month for La Porta could be a fabulous week for Far. important he made that save at the last for a 72 two holes apart an excellent day but five shots went in those two holes well that's golf Rodriguez to stay at two under par, nicely hold. There upon 18, a pretty smart card. Anything under 70 on this par 71, 13 a par four this week, normally a par five. So Sebastian Garcia Rodriguez joins Reese Enoch with the round of the day so far. Let's get some reaction from the Spaniard and Oliver Farr. For me, the key for the, the, this course is the second shot on the yeah. green. And to put and yourself the in the right places on yeah, the green. Exactly. That's the key. Exactly. Yeah. Keep, <laughs> keep doing that then. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. Good luck. <laughs> Oli, a couple of really big hiccups in the card, but other than that, it was really solid golf round, wasn't it? Yeah, there was um, two bad holes, but 16 pretty good ones. Um, yeah. And looking at the score in today, um, to only have two holes where I dropped shots on was pretty good. Obviously, yeah, I dropped a lot of shots on those holes, but. 
Um, it was a challenging day, um, mainly on the greens, but um, I felt like I handled them pretty well. And um, yeah, hopefully we can make amend for those errors tomorrow. Two wins this season, but not a round to remember for Antoine Rosner. The Frenchman did finish his day on a high, though. Watch this one. An outrageous part at 18. Would you believe it? For just the second bird of the round for a three over par 74. Work to do, though, to get back into contention on Friday. Well, at least he still battled. Yeah, always nice to finish on a positive note. Now, Jackson, he went out 36. We saw him birdie 17, and there is the parpet at the last, and he ends up shooting 70. A very smart card indeed. Now, Francesco Laporta out in 35. He did bogey 14, but he birdied 15. And then here he is at 17 that we saw senior birdie earlier on. And now that moves Laporta to two under par. Yeah, going nicely. But the best back nine of the day, well, that came from Matthew Jordan. Two over par at the turn. The Italian challenge winner made birdies at 11, 14 and 15. Disappointed not to add to that list at the last. But nonetheless, this was for a back nine of 32. Jordan clawing his way back into contention at one under par. To start off with, I didn't think it was that easy. Uh, I kept making a couple of really silly mistakes. I wasn't doing much wrong. I just, yeah, just stupid errors, really. And then just I saw the scoring and it wasn't actually that good, so I just stayed patient and once I got one back I wasn't too far off the lead so that just kind of yeah. settled me down and then yeah I just picked up a couple more which was nice. Now it's been a strange round for Callum Hill. Eagle the first, bogeyed four, then he doubled seven and eight to go out in 39. Birdied 10, 12 but he bogeyed 16. Here he is with his second shot to the last and if he can make birdie he'll shoot 72 and he certainly got a chance but after his start he'd be thinking low. You heard Matthew Jordan there, John, saying scoring not as good as maybe expected. Are you surprised that no one's got better than two under par? Well, a little bit, yeah, but, I, you know, the breeze has been very tricky. It's it's moved around, it's died, it's changed direction. The greens are tough. You see the grain there, hard to read, and they're quick. But players are very good at learning stuff quickly. Yeah, disappointing front nine. Bit of a fight back on the back nine for Richard Bland. Went out in 41. Fast finishing the porter. Yes, it's been impressive from Francesco. All right, the uh, bogey at 14, birdie 15. And he also birdied 17. He's got a chance to birdie the last, which would be his fifth of the day to go with two bogeys and maybe around a 68. Great playing. He's enjoying it as well. Good to see. Why not? Some decent crowds have uh, made it to this, of course, the very first time the Challenge Tour Grand Final has come to the Balearic Island of Mallorca. Not a day to remember for, for Richard Bland. Maybe he can finish on a high. Well, the good thing is he's got nothing to worry about from a card point to view. That's better. Well done. So a round of uh, 74. Birdie at the last. Three on the back nine. Lying third in the rankings at the moment so he's trying to get top spot but no disaster if he doesn't yeah, 15 seasons on the uh, european tour he's heading back for another one as is callum hill his of course will be for the very first time good try there yeah a lot of excitement all the golf courses will be new to him of course with richard bland experience counts for an awful lot but it's uh, it's all new to young callum hill this to close with three birdies in the last four holes and for the round of the day and he does it yeah brilliant round of golf and i tell you what that won't be beaten because that's the last group out on the golf course you're putting your neck on the block there aren't you john a superb performance uh, from Laporta. He is in a rich vein of form. Yeah, it's a nice time of the year to hit it. Callum Hill to shoot. 
73. Maybe disappointed, but at the end of the day, he's only five shots back, three rounds to go. The forecast for Friday is very windy. Yeah, those back-to-back -back bogeys costly for Callum Hill, but uh, he'll be fighting hard still. Francesco Laporta looking for a second win in three starts on the Challenge Tour, jumping to the top of the leaderboard. The Italian, the one to catch after day one. Francesco, three under to start with. What was working for you out there today? Uh, it was a tough run today. So the, the wind came up in this morning, then went, went down, then it came up again, lost a couple of holes. Nice greens, so no easy to read it. So um, I played solid. Um, I only missed a couple of the first two holes, but then the, the pass started to work better. So I made four birdies, no, five birdies, two boggy, three under. Pretty solid then, all around. Yeah, pretty happy about my run, and let's see in the rest of the days. Well, if things stayed as they were, a win would take Laporta to number one on the Road to Mallorca rankings, leapfrogging Callum Hill at the top, but there's a long way to go. Only one player in the field as it stands has jumped from outside the top 15 to inside it. That's Reese Enoch, who's tied for second. He would leap up to 13th. The tantalizing prospect of a European Tour card on the line. 54 more holes still to come from Club de Golf Akinada. And there's bound to be plenty more twists and turns to come. Turns to